You're watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. Dr. Tim Markley, superintendent of New Hanover County School System, is, uh, is our guest this morning. Graduation rates are always uh, a big issue. Uh, what's that figure now, and, and what's your goal? We're in about the 70% range when you look at it as a total. Now, our minority students are below that range, and that's a concern when, um, it could, when half of the students who start ninth grade aren't finishing in four years, and then now some of them go on and, and finish in five years, but that's, that's something that concerns us. That was a big concentration of yours at Catawba, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you raised the graduation rates uh, considerably. We were one of the top ten graduation rates in the state, and we were the largest graduation state for what I would consider large districts. And How did you do that? Well, it's, it, there's, it's not a one, there's no one thing to right. do. It's a, it's a number of things. One is stressing the importance and value of education. A child or a student has to know that their high school diploma has value when they leave. I think of a high school diploma really as that first rung on the ladder. Everything you do today really requires you to have a high school diploma. Whether you want to join the military, community college, four-year college, you've got to have that high school diploma as that first step. The second so selling that point to students. Selling that piece is important, not just to students, but to parents. To parents. Because <laughs> right. parents are a critical right. piece in getting those students right. to, to school every day and making sure that they understand that value. And that's a, that's a tough job. Um, the achievement gap, uh, sometimes reflected between white and minority students and often reflected with students from families on the lower economic scale as compared to others, uh, has always been an issue here and, and other places. Mm -hmm. Comments on that? It comes down to a couple of things to close the achievement gap. Resources. Uh, those high need schools oftentimes need more resources than, than some other schools. And it comes down to leadership. You can look at specific schools here in this county that have, that have really worked to close that achievement gap. They haven't done it yet, but they've made some great strides. Freeman uh, has had some success there. Uh, I want to say Sunset Park is another school that's had some success. Uh, and that's a credit to the folks in that building. Teachers, principals, and the folks who are there to, so that to, takes a concentrated effort. It takes a concentrated effort, and it's not an easy piece. It takes uh, working with the parents, working with the students. Was there as big an issue in Catawba as there, as there is, as, is here? Yeah, we had several schools that were... Uh, underperforming? Uh, well, not underperforming, but were high minority, high free and reduced lunch schools. Uh, and, and they were successful, but again, the principals and the teachers put in the hours and the time necessary to... to to make that happen. And for years we've been hearing the mantra of uh, how important it is that the family involved you just mentioned mm -hmm. you got to sell that component of what it takes to live in this world today to the families as well as the students. Um, how do you get parents that are not uh, responsive to get involved in the child's education? How do you do that? Well it's, it's tough because sometimes those parents, I mean school's the one thing that everybody's been to at least for a little while and some folks had a bad experience when they were in school. And, and so they have this impression of school based upon what happened when they were there. And so we've got to go out and change that perception for some of our parents. How do you do that? Uh, find ways to bring them into the school that don't, uh, that don't always involve their child maybe being in trouble, a positive mm -hmm. experience for them, maybe going out to their community to, uh, to have that first conversation with them. And we've got some social workers and, and school folks who do those kinds of things to try to bring those parents in. Uh, there's some great things going on in, in this community, the Blue Ribbon Commission and some of the others that are working on, on trying to reach out to those parents in those areas. So it's, we, like I said, talked about with graduation rate, it's a multifaceted approach and, and hopefully we can find that one piece that connects with a parent. Do you think too much is expected of public schools these days uh, that used to be a part of the parenting responsibilities? Well, we go back to what you talked about, how school was different than when you and I went. Right. We do a lot more in school today than when you and I went to school. I mean, I graduated in the 80s, uh, and the amount of work we do in terms of social work, the amount of work we, we do in mental health and putting mental health folks and other folks in schools wasn't there when you and I were in school. So we've had to take on that broader role, but it's more important. Um, you took a personal tour of all 43 schools in the district recently. Mm -hmm. What was your general assessment of the state of the buildings? I think our operations folks, custodians folks, have done a great job maintaining the buildings they have. Uh, we've got buildings, though, that range from the early 20s all the way up to brand new buildings, and it shows in some of those buildings mm -hmm. just the, uh, the age, but I think our, our operation folks have done a good job keeping them clean, but when you, when you haven't had capital, sustained capital funding in a, in a, on the long term, there are some issues. The recent rain that we had, uh, the heavy rain, 
really showed some of the issues we have with some of our roofs and, and those things where we a lot of water leak in. So there's some maintenance things that we have to do. They're, how do you how do you do that? Uh, um, the county hasn't funded uh, capital projects for, for, for some time. Um, now it seems that they're depending uh, on the state lottery money to do uh, to come in for capital projects. How do you how do you answer all the needs that you need to answer? You got tech, tech technology needs. You got uh, maintenance needs. Well, what you have to do is you take the resources that you have, prioritize the needs, and start and try to work your way down the list, and then. Hopefully, you can work with the county commissioners when the, when the funding gets better to uh, to help alleviate those needs. Who who decides uh, what capital improvements get funded and, and which don't? I know that there's requests put in. There are requests from the principals. Right. Then there are also some district wide requests that uh, that we that we handle, like roofing and such. And then the, our budget goes to the board of education for approval. They'll approve that, and then we take that budget to the county commissioners to get funded. So ultimately. At the end of the day, it's the county commissioners who provide the, the funds for, for some of the capital improvement. But who decides how that money is used? Once it comes, back to us, it comes back to the administration. And you talk about lottery yeah. dollars, and that's a very small pot in terms of what it does for yeah. us in terms of capital. And there's a strong probability that the district will have to deal with some deep budget cuts. They're talking $14 million. State of North Carolina has a currently a $4 billion uh, right. projected shortfall. Uh, if that holds, that could be local education cuts to the upwards of 15 million. Now the state piece tends to fund the instructional and personnel side of the house while the county funds helps with the personnel but funds the capital side a little more. So those and those state dollars are generally very categorical. So any cuts from the state are going to may potentially impact the instructional side more than the, uh, the instructional capital side. side. And that's that's obviously a concern. I'll, I'll get some quick um, responses mm -hmm. uh, from you on on a couple of on a few things. Trailer classrooms comments. I'm not obviously. It's, it's an issue that we need to re reduce the number of trailers. Uh, we have we had 90 when I started. We're down to 89. Uh, <laughs> well, you've only been here a few weeks. Uh, I'd like to get our trailer numbers under 50 uh -huh. uh, long, as, as one of our goals. Did you have to deal with that? Did you have anything like that? Yeah, in we had when I started. There were over 60 trailers in Catawba County, and we eventually reduced them down to I think uh, we cut that number in half. What's your take on the magnet school concept? Magnet school concept is is great. But for magnet school to work, the parents have to believe that they're getting something different and special in that school. So we've got to do a good job of making those magnets special and do a good job publicizing that to our parents. Uh, charter schools, comments? Uh, state allows them. I'm, charter schools fill a niche for some folks. Uh, no complaints with that. Uh, Would you I like to see a, that cap? There's a cap, 100 uh, in the state. Is that sufficient or would you like to see it removed? That's a pretty big issue with some parents. And, I understand, but when you look at the success rate of charter schools, uh, it's, in a lot of cases, they don't do very well. Uh, those they don't that, do well in, in educating children? No, if you look at the failure rate for charter schools, it's significantly higher than, and folks say, well, you have problems with public schools, and, and I understand that, but I would say the, the rate for charter schools is significantly higher for failure than anything in the public school. Now, if they're doing a good job, and there's some good ones, is uh, uh, the we're, one in Brunswick County. We're out of time. <laughs> thank you so much for coming in. All right, thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll have you back next week. All right. Seahawk basketball. Buzz Peterson, Cynthia uh, 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 Cooper Dyke, and 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 uh, Jimmy Bass. Seahawk basketball next week. You've been watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Join us every Sunday morning as we explore the issues that concern you.